Varangian Guard is a steadfast bastion, forcing opponents to adapt their playstyle. The long-awaited Viking hero does this with a moveset as interesting as a brick wall, but there is a glory hole to be found with her Oathkeeper gimmick. Despite my initial excitement during the reveal, I was disappointed to see how basic her kit was. I was adamant this defensive hero would struggle to keep up in an offensive meta. So I decided to spend the next 10 hours learning the Varangian Guard to prove she needs a buff. And you might be surprised at how my outlook changes by the end of the video. After parting with £6.49... Mum, I need a favour. Seriously? In this economy? It's beans on toast for the rest of the month, boys. <laughs> I took Catla into hero tactics to see if her moveset was as shallow as I first thought. Unfortunately, my fears were confirmed. VG has very few options from neutral. However, the binding mechanic stopped me from writing her off straight away. This feels like what the devs were trying to do with Ocelotl's hunter stance attack. Don't worry, we'll get to him later. Seriously, it makes enemies hang around for three to five business days. You can get a brew on while you decide what attack to follow up with. My initial impression was that she will be a bit of a noob killer, but despite how appealing that sounds, Hour 2 got off to a rough start. Oathkeeper is satisfying to land, you can see the devs put thought into how it works as an anti-gank tool. For example, if you have a short window to follow up, you're better off doing a light attack. Surrounded, the zone is your best bet. However, this didn't do me any good as I struggled to pull off any anti-ganks with her. Skill issue. I know. So I quickly began to get tilted. Oh, that's not fair. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if I hit her uh, externally, she's going to stun lock me. Fantastic, when she's already slipping her dick down my throat. And I am ashamed to say that this continued into hour three. Oh, come on, man. There's more to it than that, isn't there? There's more to it than that. I just couldn't get into a flow state with her. I think it's because her offense is so wooden. Everything hinges on either landing the unblockable or Oathkeeper. Huh? Oh, I just pulled the freaking thing off and just didn't do the follow-up. Oh, I've got the light parry, though. <laughs> Otherwise, I feel like I'm just light spamming out of my mind. And this is probably intentional, as her light-heavy attack combinations can all be started with a dodge light or crushing counter, too. Factor in the enhanced light property, and my R1 button is getting more action than your mum on Friday night. It felt like I was missing something. Nevertheless, I decided it was time to stop feeling sorry for myself and to experiment. I was desperate to try and find a quirk to her moveset. There was nothing. By the time I closed hour three, I was seriously contemplating dropping the video. VG was just that bland. Then I remembered the info hub, my guiding moonlight. If there was anything I missed, it would be here. Max punishes, already figured that one out. Dodge cancels, Oathkeeper soft faint, that's already in hero tactics. A seer finishes soft faint to guard break. What? UB missed that one off the move list, didn't they? I mean, this is nothing crazy and it doesn't solve the problem, but it was encouraging enough to continue playing into hour four. And I was starting to see, I said, I was starting to see, and I said, I was starting to see the potential. I wanted to like this character. She has a strong identity as a support. Her feats and even her perks play into this. They could have easily given her tank perks, but committed to the playstyle. And there's probably some Viking bias going on here, but I was determined to enjoy this hero. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Has he got that? Has he got that fight? I believe. I trust in my teammate. Oh, no, he's getting ganked. He's getting ganked. I'm coming, buddy. Oopsie. Get off the floor. How many hits? <laughs> oh, dear. Then it hit me. I wasn't angry because Varangian was bad or because her moveset was basic. I was externalizing my hatred because I was bad. I was so focused on landing Oathkeeper rather than using it situationally. I was making myself so easy to read. I was my only enemy. Jumping straight into fours and expecting to fight everyone off single-handedly without learning her fundamentals. Yeah, I know they're basic as fuck, but you can't pull off in second gear. That's a bit of manual car humor for all of you who drive automatics. It it's time to take a step back, readjust my approach and get a proper handle on VG's 1v1 potential in the hope it would help me get better in fours. 
and hour five is where my outlook began to change. I expected her to be weak in Jewel. Surprisingly, I think she has good conditioning potential in matchups. Found her to be particularly effective against Kyojin. <laughs> Oh, wall splat again. There we go. What am I doing? I'm I'm playing fucking OG for honor. What am I doing? I'm doing guard breaks after light barriers. <laughs> I fucking suck. I'm freaking terrible. After winning back-to-back -back duels, I felt like I was better equipped to make the most out of a simple move set. My newfound optimism was put to the test as I started to face what felt like counter picks, and VG began to feel like die at Black Prior. Imagine not being able to counter unblockables with your full sands. Undeterred by this, I was able to get some questionably good plays in. Oh, no way! <laughs> Although I was enjoying VG, she without a doubt needs a buff to her offense. I think she needs a chain bash, minimum. But if I wanted to jazz her up, I would give her a seer finisher another property. The option to hold a heavy attack and turn it into a trap move with hyper armor. VG uses the axe head to hook you in and from here she can execute her Oathkeeper follow-ups. I think this would give her offense the kick it needs and bring much needed harmony to her defensive properties. It would risk making her oppressive so I would split the Oathkeeper follow-ups. For example, making it so the unblockable can only be accessed from a defense Oathkeeper rather than the hypothetical trap move. I'm probably going overkill with this as when I asked for your guys input the consensus was that she was okay and I do generally agree she's well balanced. I just think she needs a little boost to keep up with some of the other heroes. As I crossed the threshold into hour 7, I could feel myself beginning to slip back into self-pity. For honor syndrome had me in its clutches and every game was just miserable. Even in victory, I found no pleasure. What are you, what, what are you freaking doing? Where are you going? Yeah, you're not so good now, are you, freaking fruit pastel boy? Oh, go back to your freaking sweet shop, mate. The disgust from my Frona rage hit me harder than post nut clarity. What would I say if I could see myself getting tilted like this? You are cruel, and arrogant, and selfish. I'm just having a little tactical retreat, okay? Refreshed from my stint in the mines, I wanted to capitalize on Varangian's anti-gank tools. Hitting Oathkeeper on externals gives VG a lot of control during team fights. Being able to stun opponents trivializes revenge. Go away. Get off my health point. Go away. Go away. Go away. <laughs> and as I concluded my challenge in hour 10, I think it's time to address the ocelot in the room. <laughs> no, not that one. Oh, you like this hero called Ocelotl, the most boring hero in Toronto? Let me explain. Ocelotl and Varangian are opposites in terms of their design. Ocelotl lacks a gimmick but boasts an enjoyable moveset, while Varangian features a cool gimmick but falls short with a less exciting moveset. Both characters are beginner friendly, but Varangian seems to have a higher skill ceiling. In an ideal world, I would like to have an interesting moveset and a cool gimmick, but that's not the world we live in, Sweet Pea. And if I had to pick one, I would choose the gimmick. She's reminiscent of a old For Honor hero that has been reworked into the current meta but she's not quite there yet and I think if some of the changes I suggested throughout the video were implemented VG would become a much more well-rounded character. What it's like is she's a ham and cheese sandwich. Acceptable but not exceptional. But add a bit of pickle to it and it becomes an elite butty. What do you think about the Varangian Guard? Let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out my 10 hours of Ocelotl video too.